There are men who absolutely cannot stand it when a woman is confident. When you have high self-esteem and you place a high value on yourself, you're decisive, you know, you don't take any shit from them, and you think that you're the prize, not him. You demand that he reciprocate. You have no problem telling him about himself and leaving his ass. They, they can't stand you. And I think most women have run into, you know, if you a kind of woman who's about her, about her business and making things happen, you've run into most likely several guys with this mentality over the course of your lifetime. So for those who are curious, let's, I want to talk about, let's first, let's establish what it is that we're talking about. Let's define confidence. I think that confidence is having the belief that you can do it, you can be it, you can achieve it. You believe in yourself. And when people are not confident, they're usually looking for all kinds of uh, validation and support from other people, even as far as, I, I mean, I don't know, they just, they're just real needy from outside themselves. They don't believe they can do it. They need somebody else to tell them that they can do it. They don't believe that they can achieve their dreams. They need somebody else to tell them that they can. And they also sometimes need somebody to, to help them formulate the dreams. They can't even do that on their own. So confidence is basically the stuff that turns your thoughts into action. And people who lack confidence tend to be fearful. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of success. They're even afraid of failure, which it's like, can you be afraid of one or the other? Why you got to be afraid of everything? They're just, you know, really afraid. So they cling basically to what they know, and they never achieve anything beyond the baseline. Um, They're too afraid to take the risk. Now, when you look at the achievements and the strides in education and things that black women are making, there's a lot of women of all races basically that are striving for greatness. They want to achieve their dreams. They want to create. They want to grow. They take risks. They want to go places and do things that they've always wanted to do. And, you know, you see a lot of women traveling alone around the world. Uh, They're not afraid to go and do things, eat out at restaurants by themselves. I mean, you know, women today are just doing all kinds of things that they want to do without fear. But guys tend to hate that. You know, they they don't necessarily like a woman who uh, feels powerful in herself. They want you to be dependent on them for everything. So... When they meet a woman who is powerful and who's confident and who has high self-esteem, some of these dudes will do everything in their power to break you. Just like a pony, they're going to break you in mentally, spiritually, and emotionally uh, with the goal of making you fearful and weak like you know so many other women are. Now... You understand they don't use this. They don't do this to women who are already broken. Those women who uh, suck up to men and bend over backwards to please men. They don't do this to them. <coughs> excuse me, because those women are already broken. Instead, they looking at uh, those women who basically uh, will accept anything. You know, they're not a challenge. They're they're too easy, and they're also not the subject of this video. I think it's important that you guys remember that men like challenges. I keep saying that. If you're just real easy, they don't really have to work for you. Um, They don't appreciate it. That's just the male mind. So the woman who basically who will stand strong on her own and who doesn't kiss a man's ass and who's actually better than they are, they can't stand you. They can't stand you. These guys love insecure, desperate women. And if you aren't already in that category, they're going to do everything in their power to make you that way. So what they do is enter into the relationship with the goal of changing you. That's They sought you out because they felt like you had too high of an opinion of yourself and they wanted to break you down. I think it's like a you know, feather in his cap that he's able to do that. So if you allow them you know, to start impacting your decisions and your thoughts about yourself by folding in and, and adopting some of those weak-minded behaviors that you know men should run shit without any kind of qualification just because he's male, well, then you fell right into their hands. They're going to do everything that they can to dominate and control you. 
and start upping the ante on your behind and tell you just it's just a big mess. So um, these guys, I mean, there are men who really do believe that female insecurity is an integral component of a woman's femininity. And I've said on several vi several of the videos that I've done over the last few months how femininity is a male construct and that males have assigned to women all the things that they didn't want to be. And they wrapped it up in this big pink bow and make it all sound like it's something positive and for, something for women to strive to be by giving themselves all the the attributes of power and decisiveness and aggressiveness and assertiveness and uh, strength and all that. They give all that stuff to themselves. So see, if you are a woman and you present yourself as having any of those qualities, they're going to automatically assume that you're not, quote, feminine. And I'm like, I'm trying to find where the benefit is to being feminine, but maybe we'll talk about that on another video. So anyway, um, let's talk about this game here. This game of femininity and masculinity because from my point of view is something that allows men to feel manly without actually doing anything see they get to be that way by default because you have willingly adopted all these other behaviors and it starts from childhood you know we start getting socialized to be quiet you know because that's supposed to be ladylike and dainty right so we have to suffer in silence and not speak up because, you know, we're not supposed to yell. We're not supposed to say no and stop and those kind of things. We're taught to, you know, we should stay in the house and take pride in knowing less than a man. Because they start drilling you with that nonsense, too. You know, don't seem too smart. You know, don't let him know that you know more about it than he does and this and that. And I'm like, fuck that. If I know it, I'm going to say it. And if you don't know it, then I suggest you learn it just like I did. And, uh, you know, the, the, I mean, then we like we're taught to obey our daddy. Right. And then our husband and then to submit to the husband and to be nice, even if it hurts you and to sacrifice yourself for other people for their benefit from kids on up. So, you know, the, 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 the programming starts early and uh, all of these things are labeled feminine and all these things are assigned to women and all these things are something assumed that we're supposed to assume are beneficial to us and I'm just calling the bullshit flag on that one but let's talk about these you know this, these men whose goal I kind of got a little sidetracked sorry about that but let's talk about these men who want to shatter your confidence basically it's kind of like a pimp game they have like standard certain behaviors that they do it's very easy to recognize them when you see them coming and um is just all their techniques are designed to undermine your confidence in yourself and attack your self-esteem. So you guys, you know, you need to be very watchful for these behaviors. They not, not necessarily always cross the line of what we call ver verbal and emotional abuse, but they're if not if they haven't crossed over, then they got they they toe on the line. That that's you know that's my assessment of it. Um, because it's very subtle, you know, they're, they're, this can go on for months and, uh, you know, you won't necessarily notice it right away. I notice it immediately because my ego is bigger than any man's. So any kind of little snide attacks and stuff like this, say I immediately go into attack mode back. So if they say something about me, you can bet I'm going to go for their jugular. So it doesn't, you know, but that's because I'm older and because I know these games. But for those of you who don't, you know, this is going to provide you with a lot of education about clown ass men in the dating scene so that you can, you know, if you run into this kind of dude, know that this partnership is not going to go anywhere because his not until you're destroyed. That's his goal to destroy you. And you thinking that you in love and all this old shit. So you're going to end up in a situation where you just in. He's going to have you in a puddle of tears and broken dreams. And his ass will then be sitting over there feeling positively defined. Because he, you know, made you into another broken woman. Now, what is these, these, these I mean, what kind of dudes are these? Obviously, they're sociopaths. I mean, who, who thinks of this kind of stuff? Who wants to, you know, tear down another human being in order to build themselves up? Why don't you build yourself up under your own power? Why do you have to build, to break her down and stand on her head in order for you to feel like you somebody? See, these dudes are sick. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is here, but I'm telling you, it's, it's very, very common. 
Now, I run into these kind offline. You know, I have some stories um, from the guy. I mean, it's, I remember this one date I went on. This guy, I met him, I don't know, at a club or party or something. And then he wanted to take me to lunch, right? So we went to lunch. And I had been at this restaurant for 10 minutes. And I got up and walked the fuck out. This clown is going to sit there across the table from me and say, um, why don't you tweeze your eyebrows? Now, we had our menus. We hadn't ordered yet nothing. I said, why don't you tweeze your eyebrows? I said, I like my eyebrows just the way they are. And he's like, well, I think they would look this. I'm like, who the fuck gives a f-? You know what I mean? Who gives a fuck what you think about my eyebrows, motherfucker? And I got up and walked the hell out. So, um, you know, just little things like that. They're going to attack your hair. They're going to attack your figure. They're going to say something. And uh, for me personally, I have, you know, several of these types of guys like, you know, that are like my online stalkers, it's an entire crew of them that follow me around all over the Internet. My websites, they were on Blog Talk and now they're here on, um, on YouTube now that I left Blog Talk. And what's so interesting is there's like 10 of them and it's like one of me. And they've been trying to break my ass for 10, 12 years and they still haven't made even the smallest dent. And I personally think they're little punk bitch asses because they think ganging up on a woman, um, you know, makes them feel like big men. I'm like, not one of you can take me on by yourself, you bitch ass motherfuckers. And it's like, you know, I just, I can't, I did this. They disgust me, all of them. They disgust me to no end. And I just, you know, never stop doing what I'm doing. I'm never going to change. And so if they want to spend the rest of their life trying, I guess they don't have nothing else to do with their time and energy, I suppose. But... You know, I just want to put that out there because I'm sick of that shit and I'm just tired of them whining like little bitch boys since that's all they are. I mean, who does that? It's supposed to be grown ass men working and having some hobbies and interests and families, and instead they spend all their time on YouTube making videos about some woman that they never even fucking met. Just weird old freak ass fools. So, anyway, let me go back to my topic. I did another diversion. But anyway, these dudes believe that their identity as men is based on a woman needing them. They don't feel like they can fulfill the role of man unless there's some woman dependent on them in some way. So he wants to position things so that you feel grateful that he's with you and doesn't matter how trifling and low down and useless the motherfucker really is he's still trying to position you so that you're lower in confidence lower in self-esteem and lower in in believing of you know who and what you are than he is he must feel superior to you and if he has to do that by breaking you into pieces then that's what he's gonna do so let's talk about these you know i think there's about five uh common topics Uh, tactics rather that they use and I'm going to share those thoughts with you there's probably more I mean if I had thought about it longer but I don't know five is enough I'm going to get this video out okay number one he's going to do and say everything he can to make you feel inadequate now just let me give you an example I say you do something that you know you think is nice you did something nice but what does he do he complains that you didn't do it right or you should have done something else or you know he's gonna make some kind of little criticism so to show you that your effort doesn't really measure up so instead of being appreciative and happy that you showed him some kind of love and affection and you know respect or whatever um, you walk away feeling like nothing you ever do is good enough and uh, I saw this this um, you know now that I think about it I remember this happened uh, with this woman I was we went to her daughter's birthday party and she had bought some food. I don't know where she got I think she got it at Chili's or something. Some takeout food for the party. And so her husband comes in, right? And she sits down. She fix him a plate. And she asks him how he liked the food. Now, keep in mind, this motherfucker hadn't done shit for the party. Hadn't done nothing. Hadn't even invited his relative. She had to do that. And he sits down at the table and starts eating the food. And, this, and she asks him how did he like it. And he had the nerve to say, well, you know, it's all right, but... And then he started, you know, going in on the food. And she was so upset, she picked up the whole pan of food that was left. You know how they put them in those aluminum, uh, those aluminum pan things? And dumped the whole thing in the garbage. And the whole room got quiet, right? Because everybody was like, oh, <laughs> what the hell just happened? And I'm like, shit, you should have dumped it on his head. That would have been my approach. He would have been wearing that food. 
and cleaned up all the mess because I wouldn't have cleaned it up. It could have stayed there till hell froze over. I would have walked right over it. And, you know, but that's just me. But that was, and that's an example that I saw in real life, you know, where he made her feel like whatever she did, you know, it didn't measure up to his royal fucking standards. And uh, so he complained and criticized um, instead of just saying, you know, thank you, babe. You know, the, the party's nice. Everybody seems to be having a good time. That's all he had to say. But instead, he was going to go into a five minute tirade about how she what she did wasn't good enough. And a lot of times they'll focus on your weight because they know, you know, that's kind of a, a, a spot. So, you know, if you lost weight, then he's going to talk about how your boobs shrunk or how your ass is too flat now and or your jeans don't fit right. Or, you know, if you put on makeup, he's going to lean in and tell you that he don't think the color's right on you. Or he's going to constantly compare you with some other woman, usually an ex or some one of his buddy's girls or something. But in whatever way he does it, you're going to come out on the short end. And he's going to say it in a way that comes across as helpful. Now, see, this is the trick. This is how they play you. They don't say it in a yell. They don't yell it, right? They don't scream to yell. They don't even raise their voice. They say it in a nice, normal, conversational tone so that you're not really expecting. You don't, you're not expecting to have to go into defensive mode. This is a mental tactic. So they say it in this nice, calm little voice, right? And, you, you know, you're just listening. Now, the goal here is to get you to listen to get you to absorb the criticism as being valid so you feel less confident and you start doubting yourself he wants to be in control of your self-esteem and they say so if he yelled see then you would get you know you guys would probably get into a screaming match and it would be a lot easier to just you know just blow off his comment as bullshit so he's going to say it in this nice calm voice so then later if you get upset about it he, well you know what are you saying i was just trying to be helpful i wasn't trying to be mean and no one was full well his bitch ass is lying but that's how they play the game so watch that ladies watch the tone watch the volume of his con his comments because that is as, as big a part of the of the bullshit game here um as the words he uses number two He's going to target your weaknesses and violate your boundaries. Now, as I kind of started talking about the weight issue, you know, most women have something about themselves that they would like to be different or want to improve on or whatever. And generally it has to do with some physical trait or, you know, weight or you know, a tummy tuck or you know, something like that. And I remember uh, the first time I saw some shit like this, my cousin, my older cousin, had had a baby. And, uh, you know, I mean, the baby was like tiny, like a month old or something. So she hadn't lost all the weight yet. And she raised up her arm to do something. It was hot and she had like a sleeveless top on. I was probably about 12 or 13 at the time. And so she raised her arm up and her husband, you know, you know how old ladies have that upper arm flab that hangs down. So she did. It wasn't hanging like that. But, you know, it was a little loose. She hadn't been at the gym or anything. And uh, her husband with his stupid ass, he goes and like wax it, like trying to make, see, if, see if it was going to swing or something. And, you know, he embarrassed her and um, everybody saw it. You know, she got upset and then he just looking stupid. And then I remember another woman here on YouTube, one of my site you know, page visitors put up a comment some weeks ago that her ex-brother-in-law used to grab her sister's boobs and ass and everything like right in front of everybody in the family even in front of the kids and it used to make her upset and um you know it's basically these guys are trying to um to give send out the message that your body belongs to him and you don't have any control over your own body he he basically runs you and his, his goal, again, is to get you to listen, to absorb his criticisms as being valid, so you feel less confident and start doubting yourself. Remember, this that's the whole goal of all of these games. Game number three, he's going to position himself as your primary source of influence. Now, this, you know, abusers do this too. And even though this... Um, like I said, it may not quite, it depends on the dude, how it's handled. It may not cross the threshold of being a, quote, abusive, verbally or emotionally abusive uh, relationship, end quote. But that's ultimately what it's going to be because he's, his goal is to try to change you and to make you feel bad about yourself. So, 
um, what he's what he's gonna do is is try to create a rift between your family and your friends and you so that you see them a lot less often you lean primarily on him for decision making assistance and for support so he wants you to run to him not to them so you know you ladies who you're all in a rush to um bring your your new man around your friends and family you need to stop doing that shit until you really get clear on what kind of dude this is because these kind would use that as an opportunity to uh kind of scope out your friends and family and find out what their story is and then he's going to use those stories as a tool to drive a wedge between you and so he's going to have you thinking that you can't really trust these people because he saw something or he heard something that you didn't see or hear. He's going to basically put doubts in your head. And he's doing that shit on purpose. And uh, he wants you to think that you can't trust them or that they're going to sabotage your relationship because, quote, they don't like me. Even though he has no proof of that, that's what he's going to say. So you, you know, side with him against them. It's all a mind trick. Or he's gonna try to, you know, you to get. He's gonna try to um, get you to close your Facebook or Twitter accounts, or give him access to them so he can monitor and delete shit on your walls and on your feeds at will. And basically, his goal here is to make you feel like if you two break up, that you won't have anybody. So the only person that you have is him. And if, of course, if you break up, then you don't have him, then you don't have no one, right? That's what he's trying to do. And so it's creating this situation where you feel more clingy and desperate and you feel less confident. And I'm sure you can say it with me now. Start doubting yourself. That's the goal. Number four, this one I call it the Pavlov's dog uh, treatment. And uh, in there, in that experiment, he um, he did what they call intermittent uh, rewards and so they found that um, being inconsistent with rewards got the animals to work harder to get the treat right so this is, this is the same treatment that this is the same uh, game that they run on women so you doing stuff right he's not going to show appreciation and praise all the time he's going to do it you know just kind of give it in bits and pieces here and there so you looking for like a thanks and a smile from his ass and that's your treat unlike the dogs right you that's your treat so you he by doing the intermittent reward thing it gets you to work harder to get the reward so you don't really notice that you're doing more and more and giving more and more to him you know looking for that little reward your little treat a praise like a lab animal and uh, that is also another tool just to get control of what you do and how you do it and how you think about yourself. So, see, he got you jumping through hoops and flipping over backwards to please his ass while he, like, you know, crosses his legs and thinks about, well, I'll tell her that this was cool next week. But in the meantime, you know, he got six days of you doing all kind of slave shit to try to, you know, get that little treat of praise from his ass. I'm like, nigga. <laughs> think again you better do it your damn self or it's not gonna get done and then my last one is how they use sex now we've talked about this a couple of times in prior videos but it definitely is a is a tool here to break women's confidence now there are women who get you know who really allow themselves to get controlled by sex i'm not one of them but you know so i don't really understand it but some of you, like, if he puts it down right, man, you will just do all kind of stuff to keep that dude around. And, uh, you know, I, I, I run from dudes like that. I mean, if they have too much magical power in their touch or something, kiss, whatever, I'm like, oh, hell no. Mm -mm, I'm out, deuces. Because I already know, you know, what's, what the power that they would have and how they would try to use it. I don't trust them. So his game, you know, dude, he's trying to make you hit the ceiling, right? make you scream his name as much as possible as often as possible but not every time because remember he's going to be doing that pavlov's dog treatment with you so he's not going to have you hitting the multiples every time he's going to just break it out sometimes and then you just going to be like a wreck the next day can't even think straight so you're going to get sprung right and you're going to end up ultimately this is his goal to get you so sprung that you side with him over your mama your boss your kids everybody Okay, that's that's his goal. And for a lot of women, you know, it works. 
So then let's talk about what's the difference. Okay, so those are the five. Those are five of the ones I could think of. I'm, like I said, I'm sure there's more if I had given it more thought, but I didn't feel like it. So let's talk about what confident women do. What is it that confident women do that drives these men crazy? Why don't they like women who are confident and they prefer insecure women? Well, I made a list. Confident women meet challenges head on. They don't run away. Now, if you have an insecure man who's, you know, he never, he doesn't meet a challenge head on or any other kind of way. Well, to see you being so brave and courageous and, you know, moving and shaking, it makes it, it just reminds him how much of a loser he is. So rather than feel like a loser, he tries to bring you down a peg or two so that you're a loser too. Okay. Confident women stand up for themselves and refuse to be treated poorly by anyone. He's not used to that. He's used to women that let him get away with a whole bunch of shit. It makes the relationship easy for him. It makes you an easy target. It makes you an easy victim. So he doesn't want you to be that. He doesn't want to perform and he doesn't want to treat you well. He just wants to do what he wants to do the way he wants to do it. And so, again, he has to break you down so that he can get away with that program. Confident women get together and they save communities. They start programs for the children and the needy and provide services which makes the world a better place. Well, if you have some kind of bottom feeder type of dude, he doesn't want the world to be a better place. He doesn't want the neighborhood cleaned up. He wants women in a, in a state of poverty and despair because it's their easier pickings. He wants those women just, you know, willing to sacrifice their children because he's a child molester. And, it put, you know, desperate women will allow him to babysit and be around their kids all night long and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he has a vested interest in keeping things all fucked up the way that they are. And they don't want women, you know, working together like that. So they're going to try to do the wedge drive there. Confident women make their husband and children do their fair share in the household. And they ain't going to work themselves to death for a bunch of well-bodied, able-bodied folks. Well, if you got a man who's a lazy fuck and he don't want to do nothing, then why is it to his advantage to marry a woman who's going to put those kind of demands on him? He's not going to want that. So he's going to try to break her down so she feels guilty about you know, not fulfilling her, quote, female job, end quote, and work her to death while he just sits his wide ass on the couch watching TV. Uh, confident women exit relationships and communities where they are not valued or where they're treated like prey. Um, you know, these guys, I mean, in spite of the fact that they are males and we typically think of men as being brave and secure and strong and stuff. And I know you've seen how many news stories, you know, where the men kill the ex-wife or the ex-girlfriend, the one who left them and stuff. They cannot stand for the woman to leave them. And so, you know, you got a woman who's confident enough to do so. Um, because you weren't treating her right, she leaves the, the relationship and she leaves the community from, you know, street harassment and crime or whatever. Well, you got a lot of men that are going to try to, they're not, they don't like that. So if you don't come back to them, back into that environment, they're going to hurt or even kill you, be, you know, because of it. Confident women don't compete with other women, but instead support them in their growth, providing compliments and a listening ear. That is hard for men because, see, that's that's one reason why they all are my case. Because I am trying to make women aware of these risks. And I'm not in competition with anybody except maybe myself to be better and be more. But um, I think, you know, providing that kind of support to women who are a little shaky in their confidence and to let them, you know, kind of reassure them. I mean, they might need, they're the kind who, you know, have maybe have been battered and bruised um, abusively in some relationship and so their confidence is, is shaken so those of us who have a lot can you know lend a little bit to them and help them get out of that situation as long as they're interested in doing so you know you don't try to force somebody to do something if they're not ready confident women raise confident girls and support them through puberty now that's important because that's the age when little girls start really getting interested in boys and that's the time when all this female socialization starts hitting them that's the time when most girls stop speaking up for themselves and the quietness of their little voices is just terrible you just see them looking meek and afraid and 
um, unsure about what to do. That as, a, as an elder, that is one of the things that I wish more adult black women would address. You know, I can't be everywhere. I can't do everything, not by myself. But this is an important thing. You know, when the little girls hit about between 11 and 14 is when they need guidance the most because people are all in their head telling them bullshit and we need to be in their ear telling them the real deal and telling them how to protect themselves and guiding them to adulthood. You know, they need that support because not everybody's got a mother who got some damn sense and a lot of kids are growing up without fathers. So, um, you know, that's something to think about. Confident women have strength of conviction and are not swayed by peer pressure or desperation. It means you have a plan, right? You work your plan. You do not deviate from it. You do not allow some stupid nigga to come and get you off track. You don't do you don't do that. You stay the course. And it requires confidence because sometimes you might be traveling the course by yourself. You know, but if you're kind of needs a group around you, you're not gonna do very well and your your confidence will be easily shaken. You have to stay your course, have the strength of conviction, and make sure that you reach the pinnacle of success that you're aiming for. Don't accept less from yourself. Don't even give yourself that out. I mean, it may take you a long time to achieve it. I mean, everybody got different dreams. I don't know what yours is, but just keep working towards it, and it'll happen. Nobody can, get, nobody can dream your dream but you. I learned that lesson the hard way, okay? Confident women believe they deserve the best and they will not settle for any old thing and marry it. <laughs> now, that's an important thing. You know, the, the crew that's, you know, I got a man and they don't care what it is as long as it's got two legs and a penis and it's breathing. Well, you know, you gonna, that's going to come back to bite you in the ass later. Confident men are often disliked, confident women rather, are often disliked by men and male-dominated women. And they're called names like ball buster, are told she thinks she's all that, or she thinks she's a man. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to give an example of that. Confident women never attribute their success to Jesus, luck, or anything else but their intelligence, their talents, their skills, their study, and the hard work that they put in to get where they are. They proudly own their achievements. And I think that's important because so many women uh, think that it's wrong. They feel like, you know, you bragging or you, you know, you quote, too proud or all some kind of, oh, simple bullshit. I don't even, you know, people be telling you all kind of bullshit. I'm glad I never listened to that nonsense. But nobody made me get to where I am today. You know, I'm not going to attribute it to no luck or anything else. I busted my ass to get where I am. And nobody sweated but me. So it's not... Um, you know, I mean, I've had people that lend some helping hands definitely along the way. I don't mean to discredit them. But I'm going to say, you know, in, in spite of all of that, um, the only one who was on this path for start to finish is me. Other people have, you know, come in and weaved it out and, and provided, you know, some encouragement and support along the way. And uh, But, you know, I'm never going to say that it was luck. I'm never going to say it came from anything other than myself because I'm the one who did all the work. Confident women don't apologize for the things that they do. This is important because a lot of women go around saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry all the goddamn time. You know, my thing is this, unless it's really an accident, like I'm driving down the street and something happens and I run over somebody or the run it. Okay, that really was an accident because I showed sure it me to do that and fuck up my car. You know what I mean? Um, but if it's some, even if it's something bad and I did it to you and I knew I was doing it, I'm not going to apologize because I did it on purpose. So what's there to apologize for? I got the desired outcome. I fucked you over. Okay. And I will admit it. I'm an asshole. I, you know, I don't have no shame in my game. But, you know, I feel like if I had to do something like that, you deserved it. And so I'm never going to apologize. Your hell freeze over first. Confident women don't seek validation from others, especially men. Now, there's a whole crew of women you see on social media. Oh, my God, the dick-sucking crew. They, anything that some man posts about what kind of woman he wants or who's, you know, what women should be, they over there just co-signing like a goddamn clown posse. Oh, yes, you know, I would do that for my king. Blah, 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 blah. I just want to reach to the computer and choke the shit out of him. It's like, bitch, stop being stupid and desperate. These niggas don't know you. And it's like, you know, you just showing your face all up there and just looking all stupid and talking about how you would be a doormat for some man. Looking for validation, thinking that, you know, he's going to like you or something. I don't know what they'd be looking at because these are knuckleheads on social media. And um, 
But you see plenty of women act doing that, you know, and they, they're all single and they're all, you know, looking to get married. And so I guess they think they can meet somebody online that way or something. I don't know what they be thinking because I just think they're dumb. Um, comparing yourself to other people and looking for their approval, that's a self-esteem killer. That's pretty self-explanatory. And confident women worry more about themselves than they do other people. Like not worrying about making someone angry by your choices or statements, especially if those things are true. Um, a lot of people will hold their tongue, you know, they say, hold my tongue. I don't hold my tongue for shit. If you need a lash or you did something fucked up, I'm going to tell you about it. And, oh, well, you don't like it. That's not, that's not my problem. That's yours. So, um, you know, of course, you don't have to say it in, you know, that way. I mean, you can say it in some more diplomatic fashion. But you should always, always check people and not carry around a bunch of, of uh, anger or frustration or, you know, their hurt feelings and stuff like that. I mean, you need to tell people when they do stuff. People are not mind readers. They may have done it, un, you know, unintentionally, but they'll never know if you don't speak up. So, they'll, you know, those are my ideas on uh, what confident women do versus women who are not confident and who have low self-esteem. But um, in closing, I think it's important to point out that, you know, you know the women who have low self-esteem are considered prey. They are targeted by predators. They're more vulnerable, and so it makes them basically easy prey for the abusive types, players, and the criminals, especially, you know, like the sex-based criminals and child molesters and stuff. Uh, and these guys are using men with lots of insecurities themselves. You know, their goal is to try to make you feel better, make themselves rather feel better by putting you in your place, quote, quote. But women with high self-esteem, um, we, you know, we usually hear, we get called labeled, we get labeled, let me put it that way, as being too strong or, you know, too confident and direct or too self-sufficient, too independent. You know, she don't need a man. So, and they say it in a way like that's, you know, they're condemning you for it. And it's um, the kind of thing like, how can you be too strong? I mean, I can see how you can be too weak, but what is too strong? I mean, too strong means it's there's too strong for you to run game on. Is that, you know, I mean, what does that mean? And how can somebody be too confident? I mean, you're confident or you're not, but where is it become measured in two? Where you know, you don't, where you really believe in yourself and you accomplish all your dreams without fail? Because that makes you too calm. You know, so I'm looking at these labels people do, and I, you know, I, th I don't let it affect me in a way where it impacts my opinion of myself, but it does make me think, you know, I wonder what they really mean by that. What's, what's their true meaning behind the words? And those are the best things I can figure out. Um, but, you know, basically the message is if you're a woman and you're too whatever, fill in the blank, that you're going to scare off men. And since most men lack confidence in themselves anyway, they tend to prefer less impressive, less accomplished, less successful women. And uh, because, like I said, they get to feel like the big cheese without really having to do much. That's why you'll see a lot of guys who you know, have more money and they'll get with somebody who works at Walmart or something like that. They get to automatically feel bigger and better and stronger than she is uh, just, you know, without really doing anything, just showing up. But the bottom line here, ladies, is if you, um, if you meet a dude who gets turned off by your confidence, understand that he is uh, uh, suffering from low self-esteem and has lots of insecurities himself. When he looks at you and he sees what you do and how you do it and what you've accomplished, he feels unworthy. And that is not, you know, he's comparing himself to you. He's competing with you. And he can see that he doesn't measure up. He's nowhere near on your level. So he will either, if he got good sense, he will remove himself from your world because he knows he ain't shit and he ain't about nothing. And or um, he will be one of the types that we talked about in this video. Since most men do prefer to be the dominant uh, person in the relationship, a woman who is confident won't let that happen. She's going to really want to share the sunlight with the guy and not have herself relegated to some dark, shabby little corner of his life with our light dulled out just so he can shine. That's bullshit. Everybody's shining in this camp, honey. Everybody. 
So uh, that's my take on the confident women, confident woman uh, with high self-esteem and how and why guys will try so hard to break her down. It's just, you, you see us all the time. So be on the lookout for men who try to do these things. Very, you know, especially the first one where he does everything that he can to, um, to uh, make you feel inadequate. That's, that's, that's their chief tool. Those little snarky comments and little nasty uh, criticism designed to make you feel less uh, proud of your accomplishments, less believe in yourself less, and look for him uh, for approval and validation. That's his goal. Don't fall for it. This is Deb Cooper, advice columnist and author. Uh, you can find my writings on Amazon.com, uh, hundreds of articles on survivingdating.com, and ask ASK heartbeat.com. I'll be back with another video in a couple of days. Uh, peace out.